सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुलट कम्स टू जम्मू एंड कश्मीर ऑगस्ट इज ए पर्टिकुलरली इम्पोर्टेंट मंथ विद इन दैट ऑल्सो द फर्स्ट हाफ ऑफ ऑगस्ट वाई बिकॉज ऑन फिफ्थ ऑफ ऑगस्ट फोर ईयर्स बैक the constitutional status of jammu and kashmir was changed in fact the state then had three parts jammu kashmir and ladakh 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 was taken out in a union territory and jammu and kashmir was also reduced to a union territory it lost its statehood those issues are right now being debated and discussed at the supreme court of india but we are not talking about that we are talking about some ground reality in kashmir which is very surprising on the pleasant side now a general impression about kashmir is that look it's a very underdeveloped state they have a history of combat and history of violence which is true both of both of those are true it has a history of militancy and terrorism that's also true it has a history of foreign interference cross border terrorism that's also true it has two hostile neighbors it's a state in india with two hostile neighbors it shares a very large border with pakistan border and line of control what's called called line of control plus it has had a long border with china as well which is now called the line of actual control that is now part of ladakh so look at jammu and kashmir jammu and kashmir which is now a union ter- territory so the general presumption is that the place must have got really left behind and if you talk to people generally people would say oh what the state needs is more development more economic growth let its society benefit let its society grow and evolve become more advanced as they become more advanced they will then dump all calls to re- religious fundamentalism all calls to arms also they will begin to see, see themselves more and more as indian nationalist which, which may not be the case right now in fact in fact the holy grail would then be that you hold a cricket match in shrinagar against pakistan and the crowds would cheer india or the crowds would cheer india against anybody in fact the last time india played an international match in jammu and kashmir was in shrinagar in 1983 against clive lloyds west indies this this was just after india had beaten the west indies in the world cup final the 1983 final and won the championship after that the west indies came on a kind of revenge series that is when in the match in shrinagar after the match sunil gavaskar of all people had said that look it sounded like i was playing in some other country against some other country and this was this was a crowd belonging to that country because the crowd was so hostile to the indian team so indian team hasn't played a game in shrinagar since then this was an aside i digress sometimes but that that is also because some of these stories are relevant now that kashmir what is the situation on the ground in terms of development social indicators economy etc etc now look at some data and as i as i speak these graphics will run on your screen the graphics will endure please look at them carefully i will also share with you a story that nikhil rampal has done in fact i am i am using data from his story and also graphics from history now if you look at this data let's let's first look at five indicators and all of this data this this is not some fixed data this is not from some international ngo international organization which which may be slanted this way or that this is not data from any ngo indian either this is data from national family health survey 5 nfhs 5 conducted between 2019 and 21 by modi government now we look at five indicators and these charts will be on your screen sex ratio at birth that means how many female children compared to a thousand male children then under 5 mortality how many babies die unfortunately before before their fifth birthday less is better number 3 percentage of institutional births what percentage of women have births or what percentage of babies are born in hospital or hospital like settings compared to births at home next what is the total fertility rate rate 
that means the average number of babies a woman will produce in her reproductive years that is that is generally reckoned between 18 and 50 and then the fifth point the level of anemia among young women now if you see this data and you will see the chart on your screen it will tell you that sex ratio at birth kashmir is doing much better than india in kashmir it's 976 women to a thousand men for all of india it is 929 women to a thousand men so all all India figures have improved, but Kashmir figures are way better than that. So very significant indicator and a good one. Then children who do not live up to their fifth birthday. Out of a thousand children born in Kashmir, the number of children who do not live until their fifth birthday is 18.5. So for simplicity of understanding, you, uh, you can say out of the 10,000 born, 185 will unfortunately die before their fifth birthday. That is also unacceptable. But look at the All India figure. All India figure is 42, 42 per thousand. So 42 per thousand compared to 18 point. 5 per, uh, per thousand. So all India figure is almost two and a half times of the Kashmir figure of infants dying before they turn five. Infant mortality is much lower than Kashmir than, than in the rest of India. It's 40% of what it is in the rest of India. Rest of India is 150% more. That is a very important point to note. Then total fertility rate and that's a bigger surprise. Total fertility rate is how many children would a woman produce in her reproductive years. For Kashmir, the number is 1.4. That means 10 women between them will produce 14 babies in their reproductive years. For all of India, the figure is 2, which is actually very good because at 2, India has reached the replacement level. India will not, not be adding more population much faster than was imagined. But Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir, I should be careful to say Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir with 68% Muslim population as per 2011 census. There, the number is 1.4. So it's way below the national fertility rate. It's also lower than any other major state's fertility rate. So Kerala now is 1.8. Punjab is 1.6. Again, a very progressive state in these matters. But Jammu and Kashmir is one. Point four. That's very, very, very impressive. Once again, if you want to see institutional births, that is babies born in hospital style institutional setting. In Kashmir, the average is 92.4. That is out of the thousand babies born, 924 will be born in a hospital like setting. All of India has made big strides in this direction. The number is 88.6, so very impressive. But 886 out of 1000 compared to 924. So not that much higher, but Jammu and Kashmir is higher, higher than the national, national average, even on this indicator. Then we come to an indicator where Jammu and Kashmir is doing worse than the national indicator. And that's that's where leaders of Jammu and Kashmir, whether whether the officials who are now running Jammu and Kashmir or opinion leaders, activists, the rest, journalists, all, all of them have to think about it. And that is anemia among women. I would have thought that since the diet in Jammu and Kashmir is predominantly non-vegetarian, the incidence of anemia for will be much lower for women as well as men. This data right now we are looking at is only for women. National average, national is 57%. 57% of the women in India are anemic. And these are women in the age group of 15 to 49 in working ages. 57% in India in India are anemic, which is really bad and shameful. But in Kashmir, it's 65%. 65%. That is, that is one indicator so far where Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir is doing more poorly than the rest of India. Then you see standard of living. Once again, uh, National Family Health Survey, multidimensional poverty survey, they, they have listed out very clear indicators for standard of living or quality of living. So one of those is cooking fuel. On cooking fuel, all over India, 44% families do not have quick cooking fuel in kashmir it's only 32.3 percent so more kashmiris have cooking fuel than the average in india sanitation 
30 percent across India lack decent sanitation, decent acceptable sanitation. In Kashmir, it's 24.2 percent. Could be better. It could be better nationally, could be better for Kashmir. Both have made improvements, but Kashmir is better. 24 against 30 is a lot better, which is very impressive. So Kashmir is doing better. Jammu and Kashmir is doing better than the national average on sanitation as well. Then come to availability of electricity. That's having a functioning electric, electric connection at home. So all over India, India has made big strides in the last 10 years. It's 96.8%. Very impressive. What is Kashmir? Kashmir is 99. Jammu and Kashmir is 99.0%. So again, marginally better. But first of all, it isn't much worse because the general impression is, oh, Kashmir must be really backward. That's why they have so much insurgency and so much alienation. Just bring more development. So they'll become, quote unquote, nationalists like the rest of India. The figures, however, tell us a very interesting story. Again, what percentage of people have kacha housing? Nationally, the number is 41.37 per 100. Jammu and Kashmir, the number is 25.36 per 100. Then another indicator on which Kash Jammu and Kashmir is doing poorly compared to the all India averages. That is availability of clean drinking water. And then, as I said er earlier also talking about the larger poverty survey, that our expectations are really minimalistic. So we say that if you can, if you have to walk less than half an hour to get clean drinking water, that means you have clean drinking water available to you. So even on that metric, nationally, the figure is now 7%. That is 7% people either don't have access to clean drinking water or they have to walk more than half an hour to get it. For Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir, this number is 10.37%. So this is worse than the all India average. Then you again come to some indicators to do with women. And we have deliberately chosen women because those are the stereotypes because population is predominantly Islamic. Also, also it's a distant state, border state, state with a history of really fraught history of trouble and alienation. Now, number of women, percentage of women with more than 10 years of schooling, 10 years of schooling. That is, national average is 41%. Jammu and Kashmir is 51%. Very impressive. Then the median marriage age. The more educated women are, the later they marry. And every government which has to worry about rising population also focuses on getting women, persuading women to marry later. So the national average for women to get married is 18.8%. For Jammu and Kashmir, it's 23.6. It's very impressive, but it's directly proportional to the number of women, larger number of women who are, get, who are getting education. Because once women get educated, they don't marry so early, particularly if they want to be in the workforce, which will be another data point that we are coming to just now. So look at the latest periodic labor force survey for the year 2021-22. That tells us that 35% of the women in Jammu and Kashmir are either working or looking for work. What does it compare with nationally? It compares with the national average of 21.7%. The 21.7% of the national average is almost about 60% of Jammu Kashmir's average of 35%. 35% of women in Jammu and Kashmir, working age women, are either working or looking for work. The number nationally is 21.7. How many women own mobile that only they use or that they have the right to use? Once again, nationally, the number is 54%. And I thought that number is very impressive nationally. But for Jammu and Kashmir, the number is 75%. So keep watching these numbers and draw your own conclusions. How many women are reporting spousal violence? That is violence by the husband. All India number, terrible, is 29.3%. That means almost one in three women complain that they've been beaten up by their spouses. For Jammu and Kashmir, the number is 9.6%. Now, don't tell me that this data is fixed and all that because all of this, most of this is data from central government institutions and central government surveys. Again, look at the total fertility rate. 
how many babies does a woman produce in a reproductive age so nationally nationally for women nationally for muslim women the number is 2.36 that means a 100 muslim women in their reproductive life will produce 236 babies in kashmir hold your breath jammu and kashmir for muslim women it's 1.45 which means a 100 women in their reproductive years will produce 145 babies so this is 145 compared to 236 which is the average for all indian muslim women it's 91 less than that 91 fewer than that again the survey data tells us what is the desired number of babies that these women want so nationally among muslim women while they are producing 2.36 babies per women or 236 babies per 100 women their aspiration is 1.8 so they want to produce fewer babies 1.8 so they are producing 100 of them them are producing 236 they want to produce 180 in jammu and kashmir that aspiration is only 131 so it's 1.31 babies per woman in her reproductive years then the question of polygamy now is there a lot of polygamy among the muslim community if there is is there a lot of polygamy among the kashmiri muslims etc we look at that question as well this data we get from the survey conducted by india international institute of population sciences in mumbai and this is a 2021 data this tells us that for all of india for muslim women and this is a question asked of women do you have does your husband have another wife besides or more than one wife besides you so women answer this question for all of india the number is 1.4% that means 1.4% indian women say that my husband has another wife or maybe more than another wife the same question asked of muslim women all across india 1.9% say that yes my husband has another wife so it's more than the national average not that much more 1.4% and 1.9% but for muslim women in jammu and kashmir it's 0.5% so that's a third of the national average and about a fourth of the average for muslim women across the country now why have these things happened now there are many many reasons and different people have different arguments so if you read nikhil story he has he has quotes he has quotes from hasib drabu who is a well known kashmiri economist he has written some papers and articles about this he also has quotes and some knowledge from a retired professor from kashmir noor ahmed baba and they basically they basically credit this on sheikh abdullah's policies his 1944 manifesto which brought in then a more egalitarian socialist kind of system in fact sheikh abdullah used to say famously that one of the reasons he quoted for not choosing pakistan over india was simply this that he thought that pakistan will become a feudal society he was socialist in his thinking and he did not, did not want kashmir to become a feudal society and that's why kashmir also built jammu and kashmir also built a tradition of having greater women's empowerment then was the case across india particularly for muslim women across india and many of these differences reflect in many areas for example if you look at the basic economy basic rural economy basic rural economy 25% of the household earnings in jammu and kashmir come from own cultivation which means cultivating your own land because land is producing surpluses for punjab it's 18% green revolution country for gujarat it's less than 16% and for tamil nadu it's just 3% once again you see a positive buzz there and how many people in kashmir have to work as poor laborers laborers with no land very few very few just 2% of the people of jammu and kashmir a pure agricultural laborers so in fact jammu and kashmir now imports a lot of labor from bihar eastern up etc and very unfortunately sometimes it is these laborers who become the victim of terrorists because terrorists know that if they have to break the state's economy the union territory's economy then they have to hit at this labor because this labor is so vital 
for the farmers in Jammu and Kashmir because there simply isn't enough people, native people in Jammu and Kashmir to work as farm labor. So let me just conclude with the oldest adage that when in doubt, bring data. And sometimes when you look at data, among other things that it does, it gives you a lot, gives you a lot of wisdom, but it also helps clear many misconceptions and stereotypes.